Hi. Look at this my friend made me. How cool is this? Something I've always wanted. A Jack Skellington wine glass. <laughs> so fun. Anyway, hi, Alex Romano. Today I'm reviewing Vengeance Extreme by Juliet Hazagun. Uh, the third one I've done in a row, so after this I'm going to move off in a different direction because I've reviewed three Juliet Has A Gun fragrances in succession. Um, I did it purely because I was waiting for something to happen and it kind of has. So this one actually came out in 2011, this one came out before Lady Vengeance. In my head it feels backwards, it feels like they, they went back on the idea. I would expect there would be Lady Vengeance and then Vengeance Extreme, but no, it was the other way around. So, um, I'll read you what it says on their little thing because it's their perfume, not mine. It says, Vengeance Extreme is a chypre fragrance which draws its intensity from an unusual dosage of patchouli, Bulgarian rose and vanilla. Um, a trail suggesting an evident sensuality with a zest of provocation. Not to be left in innocent hands or innocent's hands. Uh, main ingredients, patchouli, Bulgarian rose, vanilla from Madagascar. And that is from Romano Ricci, who I should have said before is a nephew, I think, of the famous Nina Ricci, who makes fragrances. So the actual note breakdown is, top notes are bergamot, bergamot and lavender. The hot notes are Bulgarian rose and patchouli. And then the base is where this probably gets its vengeance part from, which is labdanum which is a really gorgeous note. It's un really unusual on its own, but it's kind of like a semi-dark resin and gives a kind of dark ambery feel to a fragrance and it's quite weighty as well. Uh, then you've got tonka bean, which I always say smells a little bit like almonds, um, musk, vanilla, and then ambroxan, which is one of those single mo scent molecule note things that is supposed to smell a little bit like washing and give a bit of lift and airiness to a fragrance. So let me spray this on my hand, otherwise I'd be doing it from memory, which is no good really. So let me first say, this is what I was expecting from Lady Vengeance, where Lady Vengeance turned out to be really quite pretty and airy and not very vengeful at all. This one is a step in the right direction. Is it extreme though? It still isn't. Um, it's getting there, it's like it's cranked up a notch, but um, no, it's still not extreme or vengeance extreme, what you would imagine from the bottle and packaging. So ultimately again, it's a rose patchouli combination when you first spray it. The, the, the wet moments at the beginning are the best, I'm going to say that now because it does seem to falter a little bit. Um, so it opens with a real kind of heavyish rose and patchouli combination, but this time you've got the added weight from the labdanum, which is giving it a resinous, much darker feel underneath. Still not totally on the evil dark side, but it's a lot more in the, it's a lot more of a step in the direction that I would expect from the way they describe things, like not to be left in innocent hands, and this fragrance has thorns and things like that. Um, but yeah, it, it's really promising at first and I really like it. If only it stayed like that. It really doesn't. It starts to become less vengeful. The rose takes over and lends its powdery odour to the fragrance. This goes softer, if anything, not darker. Um, so, you know, it still remains feminine. The patchouli's giving it that green tinge again and it's slightly earthiness, but the rose prevails over all, which is, you know, what it's based around, so that makes sense. It's just not as dark as you would imagine, so if you're really looking for a dark rose, spiny, thorny fragrance, um, this one in the opening, yes, but not really in the dry down. It's got a, a fuzziness to it. I even smell something a tiny bit like mint, which is strange. Um, but it's, yeah, it's quite lifted because of the clean musk and the vanilla softens it and the tonka softens it a bit and the ambroxan lifts it a bit. So once again, I'm left wondering, where is this hugely dark fragrance that comes in this gorgeous black and red bottle? Yeah, it really does start to kind of veer off into a softer, more 
Miss Charming kind of fragrance. Um, heaviest of the three, definitely, but by no means is it what I thought it was going to be. I kind of feel like my journey with Juliet Has A Gun's fragrances is kind of going down a slippery slope. It started really high up here when I smelled Citizen Queen and fell in love and thought it was amazing. And everything I've smelled since has not matched up to it. But that's just a personal thing. So I've still got more to do, but I'll do them at a later date because I've done enough of these right now. So on this hand, yeah, more rosy. Um, not as delicate as the others. There is still that kind of weight behind it from the patchouli and the labdanum, but it loses everything that was great about it when I first sprayed it, which is really, um, sorry, I just changed my duvet and the dust is really getting to me. Um, lost train of thought. Yeah, it loses everything about it that was great in the beginning. If it stayed like it did when it was wet, it would be one that I would consider buying, but um, it doesn't go anywhere on me. It fades really quickly. Within an hour, it's barely a whisper, and I sprayed, this is a one and a half mil sample, I sprayed a mil of this on me, like that, and it's just it just disappears off of my wrists, it's just a trace of something rosy, so, bit of a letdown really, sorry J-Hag. That's it really, I'm up to my O, click my logo to subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon for another review, as always, goodbye.